Welcome back to the Shame Plays Let's Play series of Torment Tides of Numenera. We're pretty much in uh, cleanup mode here in Sagas Cliffs, trying to finish off the last of our, you know, remaining open quests that we're going to do before we get on the airship and head to the next part of the game. So uh, we need to go to On the Builder's Trail. Uh, which we have to seek passage to the Valley of Dead Hero Heroes, which we can do now because uh, the airship situation is now sorted out. So I just need to let them know when uh, we want to go. And we've completed all these quests. Um, we need to figure out which ones of these that we want to do before we go. Let's see. Arrested Mind. The seal on the portal to the Fathom where I met Camos, Villain, and... The Viataku has weakened. It should now be possible to open way back there, but no doubt the sorrow fragment that sealed it in the first place still remains. Um, so that I can do inside my basically mind palace. So I'm not sure that I have to do that before I uh, leave Sagas Cliffs. After I was strangled to death by a ghostly woman in the fifth eye, which is that psychic tavern, I awoke in a new fathom of the labyrinth. There I met the ghost again. She claimed that women... And Saga's cliffs are being transformed into copies of her, though she doesn't know how or why. She wants to help them if she can. So, find women in Saga's cliffs. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't found anybody yet. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to spend time chasing that one or not. Wild and Lost, find the book. Felinda claims I borrowed. Uh, as far as I know, I've pretty much been everywhere, running around, uh, and I haven't, I haven't found it. Shaky Foundations, um, Pelaya, a Vargellan agent of the slave families, is trying to stop the Stika. Um, to sneak into the Stika layer and steal their eggs, I, uh, I, I think I'm not going to do that. I don't feel good about that. Uh, trying to think if I want to, um mess with this or not she'll also accept a negotiated settlement with the Stika if I can somehow bring one about so maybe I could try to negotiate a settlement there the Anacoic Lazaret uh, Selimira an old friend of the changing god has been investigating a gilded structure in the reef of fallen worlds so I need to go back out there and do that the Sorrows Prey uh Zeophia, a sculptor and circus miner, witnessed the murder of a man by the sorrow, the same creature that is hunting me. Now he's obsessed with sculpting the moment of the killing, but all attempts have been failures. He cannot immortalize the victim until he learns more about him. So find a way to communicate with the shadowy reflection that has appeared in the labyrinth. Um, so I need to basically, there's two or three things I need to go inside the labyrinth or the mind palace or I guess officially it's the labyrinth but I like to think of it as the mind palace uh, what do I want to do here I think I want to go this way now let's go to circus minor whatever I'm trying to I can't remember if Ren can get me into my let me talk to Ren She's my new What's going on? I picked up last time. Um, for some reason, I was thinking she could get me into my labyrinth, but I guess not. How are you holding up? For a minute, you asked Al if I could bring, if he could bring someone to help me. I know it's embarrassing. He's not the right sort of god for that. But then you came, and you're even better than anything a god would bring me. Wow. Okay, let's continue on. I'm trying to remember the ways to get back into the labyrinth. Um, I think yes. the innkeeper up here can hypnotize me in the Cavaran Sarai. Hopefully, or did I just leave where I was supposed to go? The area that has the innkeeper, I can't remember. Okay. Pretty sure I talked to everybody around here.
All right. I don't really remember. I barely remember talking to this guy. All right, you didn't even look at my belongings. Do I have anything you can remake? Nope, you're worthy but broken. Okay, farewell. I vaguely remember talking to I'll him before. I'll handle it. Yeah, here's the little tavern One that I want to go to. And it's done. Can you get me to the labyrinth lady? Can you put me into a trance again? Certainly. Now that we know it is safe and beneficial, once again she takes your hands and begins to sing. Almost immediately your head grows heavy and your eyes close. Whoom. Alright, let's see if I can figure out some of this stuff that I'm supposed to do in the labyrinth here. Alright. There's my... Fine. It's basically a fragment of my own mind. What should I do? How do other fathoms open again? Uh, let's see. Sometimes the things you do in the real world are create bonds and bridges you lost and never had. Those bridges reveal themselves here. Right, okay. Has anything changed since last time I was here? The crown, it's your mind. Okay, ball along. Bye-bye. Yes, be nice now. Be like, yes, you have a new, you have a new fathom. Okay, I feel like this empty reflection Let's is go. something. A woman-shaped hole in the air stands before you, her palms outstretched, and you sense something different, a smell, if emotions could smell. It is sharp confusion and a sense of displacement. Somehow this woman shade knows she does not belong here in your mind. Making a note. Oh, says the specter, strolling up beside you. A reflection from a different cast-off, isn't it? He studies the outline's outstretched hands. She's lost something, he says after a moment. Something out in the world that she misplaced. Or was taken from her. If you want to draw her here, you'll have to find it. You turn back to the woman-shaped void. She continues to face you, hands held out imploringly, ignoring the specter completely. Uh... Who are you? Tidal affinity. The woman-shaped void does not respond in any way. The tides within you, however, do. You feel them uncoiling from you, reaching into the gap for whatever is lost within. Perhaps you can use them to pull the woman into being. I wouldn't, the specter says conversationally. I mean, it will probably work, but there's no telling what will happen. Just off the top of my head, it might give you the worst headache you've ever had. But it would probably be worse than that. Alright. Um, what is it you want? For a second, another outline flickers in her outstretched hands. A box, or cube-like shape. Then it is gone as it doesn't return. Okay, can you hear me? You fancy that you hear your words echoing in the dark, hollow space within the woman-shaped outline. And someone very distantly calling back. I don't think she can hear you, the specter says. For that matter, I don't think it's even a she right now. She's more of a placeholder than a person. An arrow pointing somewhere else in the labyrinth. He peers cautiously into the outline in the air as though it is a long and potentially dangerous tunnel. You'll need to find what she's missing before you can bring her forward. And you won't find it here, I think. So what in the heck? Hello? This time you hear no response. Okay, leave the shade alone. So... A cube, huh? Du, du, du. Find a way to communicate. Hold on. Okay, I've already done these parts. Found a collapsed house. Um, let's cover the body. Um, dirty. They saw some dirty children forging through the debris. 
Perhaps an object in the real world. If I can find and bring... I, what did you lose, though? I have no idea. I don't know what you lost, lady. I don't think I have anything cube-shaped. Yes. What else we got going on here? Yep, here's some fathoms. All right. Let's see what's through here. I think these are fathoms, which are airy. What in the heck? As you cross through the portal, you hear the ringing of synth plate being battered, followed by frantic shouts. Okay. Diviatiku, focus, Villan. Keep the beast away from me. I need just a little bit more time. You think focus is my problem? This is the piece of the sorrow, not some broken hound. Kimo spots you over the writhing haunches of the monster. Brothers, calm yourselves. Our friend is not lost as we feared. He will help. Strange. I saw it place a barrier against you mere seconds ago. You broke through so quickly. It shakes its head. No matter. I have an esoteric that may banish this creature, but I need a few moments longer to prepare it. Assist Camos and Villion in defending me. Or villain, so I mean in defending me so I do may do so. I think these were the three um, cast offs that were trapped in the clock thing. Or, you know, he could help. How do we know that ritual of yours will even work? Uh, complete your esoteric diviatiku. I'll help them fight it off. As you say, if you have any knowledge of the Numenera, you might also assist me speeding the process. Get over here if that is true, otherwise I will complete it myself. Um, the Sorrow Fragment snarls at villain, preparing another assault. The threat of violence triggers a reflex deep in your mind, and you subconsciously begin to summon reflections of your current companions. Uh, I'll allow them to join me. This sure. should be useful. My thanks. Okay, what are we going to do here? So I brought reflections like of my companions in, evidently. Right, my turn. What shall I do? Boy, I don't even know. Let's see. Um... I've got, hold on, what's up with my claws? I think if I'm unarmed, how do my claws work? Where are they at? There they go. Upgrade your unarmed attacks with retractable blades that deal four physical damage. And right now I've got, that does three physical damage, but plus three per effort applied, max plus nine. You know what? I'm gonna take that out right now. Unequip, and I'm just gonna use my claws. Oh yeah! Uh, two plus base attack. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, Fifteen percent chance. Whoa, that's not good, actually. Get that. Hmm. What's this do? Uh, to do warp dash. Teleport to a point and attack all enemies within short range of that point. We've got a lot of people here. So I think I'm just going to. Got a lot of allies. I think I'm just going to attack. I get a 55% chance. Missed! Missed. I'm not, I'm not exactly a big melee fighter, am I? Kamos issued a challenge. It's working. The fragment's tether is something. He said something. Ren, Ren, you really can't do much, can you? What do you got here? You can hide.
she does it. Let's see what she can do. All right, yeah, she's just gonna. We're just gonna let you chill, Ren. How do I? Yeah, we'll end your turn. Calistage, where's that? Deal eight physical damage to all enemies struck inside the radius. Oh, hold on. As you wish. Move. And then you're gonna do that. Oh, no, what is this? Transdimensional onslaught. Onslaught. We're gonna throw that. Do some damage. Watch right. and learn. Right. It's charging up. At Kina. All right, Matt Kina, you're supposed to be pretty tough. I'm gonna teleport you over. Oh. To there, and you're gonna attack all enemies within range. Does she not attack? There we go. It won't happen again. Uh, she missed. Go on. Sucker punched it and dazed it. Last cast off. So, hold on. Character sheet. Clawed gauntlets. Okay. My unarmed attacks. That's what I'm doing is unarmed right now, right? I am unarmed. So I should be doing a minimum of four damage. Why is that showing two plus? I don't understand. I warned you. Wow, critical hit, flanked. Did some pretty serious damage. I guess those claws helped. I don't think we have a combat log. All right, Ren, you're not gonna do anything. You're gonna chill. Uh, what is this? Transdimensional onslaught. You are no match for me! Alright, you're good, Calistage. We'll end your turn. Oh, doing some pretty good damage on us. Ow, I got a cat climbing all over me. Let's see what abilities you have here, Matt Kina. Uh, Fuse weapon. I don't know what damage type hurts. I'm not sure what damage type hurts these. Sorrow fragments. Um, I'm a, a, a morotic wound. Okay, I'm just gonna have you attack. That's it's like defaulting to a hundred. So I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't even... She got 100%. Didn't even have to spend anything. That was pretty nice. It's weaker. Hit us some more. Last cast-off's turn. Uh, and he's hurting pretty good. But I'm going to try to... Can't do much. 85%. I'll spend three effort and get an 85% chance. I did seven. Man, I wish... Do we have a combat log? Can't tell. Let's see if we've got a combat log here. Because I can tell I'm hitting them, but I can't tell, like, how much... You know, what kind of damage. I've gotten, I guess, spoiled with that with other games. Cannot take much more. Who shall win the honor that. of the final blow? There it goes. With the fragment of the sorrow gone, you feel new connections being made in your mind. It's as though the sorrow itself were keeping you from your full potential. Oh, well done, Camo says. We're in your debt multiple times now. 
villain. In his debt, it's his fault we're trapped here in the first place. By my count, he stops and stares at his hands. They're transparent, becoming more so. Hey, what's going on? Intriguing, Diviatiku says. It looks at its hands and feet, which are fading in the same way. We are no longer tied to this place. Our consciousness are finding a more suitable location. What does that mean? Are we dying? Are we free? Neither, I think. You can see through his head and chest. It means this part of the mental construct is not ours, not truly. We are being drawn to some place that is. Kemos places a hand on your shoulder. It feels solid, though you can barely see it anymore. Farewell, friend brother. I don't know if we will meet again, but until then they're gone and you are alone. Okay. So, not I'm sure going. what just happened there, but, um, all right. Yes. I'll remember that. All right. Quest received. Infestation. The specter looks worriedly to a different corner of the calm. A new portal has appeared where there was only empty space before. They're in there, he says anxiously. Defeating that first fragment opened up the way, but there are a lot of them in there. I can feel them. They're, they're feeding on your mind. It gives you a nervous smile. It's probably better to get rid of them, but I don't know if you can. You have to be strong. Stronger than you are now, I bet. Okay. So... That's too strong for me right now. So, let's go in here. I'm ready. Or is that the one I just went in? Yeah, that's the one I just went in. Ready. Alright, let's go up here. Have I already been in here? Ready. I have a feeling I have, but we'll find out. Alright, what is this? I feel like I've already been here. I don't know. Yeah, I've already been here. I'll run up here and check All this right. out, but... Now what's this? Oh, the ghostly woman. Yeah, I think she's the one that told me to find the... the other women. I haven't found anybody yet. Do you have any more impressions where I might find these women? One of them is dead, and yet a piece of her lives. Find that piece. Hmm. She shakes her head as though to clear it. I'm sorry, I can't tell you more than that. Okay, maybe the... Where the I'm ready. Uh, I, I forget what the name of them is, but they're like a cult of people who eat the dead. I wonder Go. If, if that's where they're at. Okay, so that's where I go when I find the women. All right. Um, I've already been in there. On it. All right. There's the ghostly one, or the the void, empty reflection that I can't really talk to anymore. I don't want to force the reflection to take shape. Yes. I guess I'll head back into the real world. Oh, I can breathe again. Okay. Whatever. I just don't know what to do. Where was the Eaters of the Dead at? Can't remember. Ready. Let's head this way. Yeah, I don't know what to do about this cube thing for that lady. Um, of course. Let's see if I can remember where the Eaters of the Dead are. That's the Order of Truth, if I remember right. Yeah, Order of Truth, the Underbelly, Council Tower, Red Thicket, Circus Miner. Let's go down to Circus Miner. How many of you are there exactly? Imagine the largest number you can think of. Multiply it by itself, 
as many times as itself, and you will have gotten very nearly halfway there. I didn't think it was possible, but you just made my head hurt more. Of course. Let's see if I can I'm trying to remember where the Eaters of the Dead are. That's the underbelly. I don't want to go there. Um, this is the guy down here, the sculptor. Let's go to Cliff's Edge. I don't remember where the flipping eat the Eaters of the Dead in the underbelly. I can't remember. The Dendra O'Hur, or whatever their names are. I guess I'll go talk to this guy down here on the off chance that he can tell me something about the uh, this cube that I'm looking for. Like a whisper. Let's go, all you and me. Oh, you won't notice I'm gone. Run. Where'd Ren go? There's Ren, met Kina. Where's Callistage? Where'd she go? Callistage, what are you doing there? This guy was yelling for Ren. Let's see what's up. Ren, the boy shouts, throwing out his arms at Sugger. You're safe! She steps back, looking up and down. Hello, rude boy. Ren, this is Otero, she tells you, a scrounger. We met outside of town. He helped me, but then he left. She glares at him like he's trying, like she's trying to knock him over. Right before that woman stole me. His eyes widen. Slavers? Tell me they didn't. They did. I told you what would happen if you brought them to me, didn't I? But I didn't bring them. I told you I wouldn't do that. I was mad, but... He glares at her. I wouldn't. I didn't. Uh... See, don't worry, Ren, you're with me now. I think he's telling the truth, Ren. He doesn't seem the type to sell out a friend. I don't buy it. People like him always take advantage if they can. You have to watch out for yourself, Ren. I'm going to say I think he's telling the truth. Well, she eyes him distrustfully. I still don't know if I can trust him. He is a very rude boy. Otero stares at her, chewing his lip, clearly trying to work up the courage to talk to her, to convince her of something. Finally, with a wry twist of his mouth, he turns back at you. Look, he says, running a hand over his stubbled scalp. You hide it well, but you can tell but I can tell you're new here. I ain't trying to offend you, but I don't like leaving folk new to Sagus on their own. If you have questions about the city, or Circus Minor in particular, I'll answer them free of charge. Of course, it looks like you already have a guide, he says, nodding at Callistage. Callistage. Hello, dear, your companion says politely before turning to you. Otero knows the city better than almost anyone, and it's quite unlike him to offer to give anything away for free, let alone his terribly valuable advice. Do take him up on his offer. Nice of you to say, Otero says, eyeing you. Well, um, I think most of the stuff's already been ordered. Most of the stuff has already been answered. Cult of the Changing God, I know where that's at. Order of Truth, I know where that's at. Yep, we're in Circus Minor now. Yep, what can you tell me about the city? Uh, what can you tell me about the city? Depends on what you want to know, he says. I spend most of my time in Circus Minor, but there's other districts too. Government Square, Cliff's Edge, the Underbelly, and Kevaran Sarai. Um, yeah, tell me about the Reef of Fallen Worlds. Only carkers, slavers, bullies, and diggers desperate for scrounge go there, he coughs. And you, of course. He stares past you down the winding steps. Besides, Fulz thinks it's haunted by ghosts from the previous worlds, and I've seen enough down there to agree with him. But you don't need me telling you what it's like. You're lucky you didn't get robbed on your way back, or worse. He eyes you expectantly. Say so someone named Koro tried to rob us on the way up. I bluffed my way past him. 
that's not easy. Otero rubs the back of his neck sheepishly. I got a good kicking from him for trying the same thing once. So my silver went up. Okay, this I think I've already gotten information from this kid. So All right, or then. You can not from this kid, but I've got the information he can give me. Okay, here's the sculptor. Uh, who and where are the Dendro Her again? The pack of animal corpses, gobblers with pretensions of mysticism. You can find them in their chapel in the underbelly. Yeah, that's what I thought. I have no idea where this lady's cube Ready. is. Yeah, I can go to the Reef of the Fallen Worlds and try to... Um, yes. There's that structure I need to investigate. But I'm going to go to the underbelly and see if I can um, find this lady's cube. Yes. Now. don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, I guess I could go to the Reef of the Fallen Worlds and try to fight there, but... Let's see Jeff for sale. Do you have anything cubish? Nope. I have, I have no idea what to do here. Yes. How do I get out of here? Circus Miner. Government Square. Kendra her. Cliff's Edge. Guess I could go back to Cliff's Edge and see if I can find this. That seems to be my best bet for this cube thing I'm looking for. Uh, this is when games, to me, it's like it's... Is I mean, it I'll, strange I'll, to have so many of your sisters with you? Doesn't it get loud? We work well together. Most of us, anyway. We share, we gossip. I am never lonely. And I am in the company of my favorite people. But what about when you have to go to sleep and one of them won't stop talking? She learned to stop, darling. We taught her. Well, yeah, I don't want anything handed to me right. on a silver platter, but at the same time, this couple of these quests seem pretty vague. Okay, I think I accidentally left the video paused. It's just, love it and hasn't been my night at the same time. Uh, for loading screens and this and that. Um, but basically, this girl, I talked to these kids. They admitted they had dug through the house, the rubble of the house, where the dead cast-off was. And uh, this girl here gave me the box, the little metallic cube that, um, yeah, there it is. It's the metallic cube. Uh, what do I need? Yes, I got all these quest items. What am I supposed to do with them? I don't even know. Okay. Um... So anyway, she gave me the, the cube, course. and now I'm going to go back into the labyrinth. And to do that, I'm going to go to the Cavern Sarai and have that lady put me in a trance again. There's other ways in. Most of the way, I could go in here into the tavern and drink something dangerous or deadly, and that might put me back into the, um, the labyrinth. But I know for, for a fact that the, this lady... Okay. So I'm here. I am back at the uh, the lady, the tavern keeper who can put me in a trance. And yes, yes, continue. And another loading screen. Lots of loading screens tonight. La la la! What a fantastic, amazing loading screen that is telling you out of all the loading screens I've ever seen that 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 is one of them another thing that uh, that little girl told me is now I can't go in here yet it's too dangerous uh, but that's where the sorrow fragment infestations are I'm that ready. little girl told me because I see you kind of familiar you look like a ghost you know that I saw in the 
um, the Fifth Eye Tavern. She goes, yeah, I've heard that before, but I fo- I'm not going to become that lady. I, I fought her off, so which is kind of interesting. Go. Uh, let's talk to the empty reflection now that I have your cube. Place the puzzle box in the outline's palm. There you go. Making a note. You gently place the cube in the shadowy figure's hands. They close over it, and a young woman, the one you found dead in the ruins of the house, plunges towards you out of the darkness. Filling the outline into the outline is her, or is her. She nearly stumbles into you before she stops herself, blinking hard. Ouch, she says. You notice the box you gave her is now as ghostly as she is. So I lost the interdimensional puzzle box. Well done, the specter says, turning away from the stunned woman. I'll uh, give you two some room to talk. You turn to the young woman again. She glances at the darkness above you, and something about the expression reminds you of someone. Of course, the ghostly woman in the fifth eye. Uh, interesting. Who are you? Saria, she says. You remember me. You found me beneath the chunks of my adopted father's house with my gut smashed to paste. Who is your adopted father? Her adopted... Orciolo. Orciolo. He was one of you, she says carelessly. A, a cast-off, I mean. A crown faust creases her forehead. Poor old man. He never wanted to be special. He found me, fed me, talked to me when I was, you know, troubled. She sighs. Uh, but when that house fell on me, I guess... I guess he couldn't stand it, and he went looking for a way to die. Updated my journal. She falls silent. We well, don't need to be told what happened next. You've seen the statue, after all. It was grief that drove Orciolo to seek death in the Sorrel's ar- arms. Saria watches you, eyes shining with some inner light. You were important to him. Do you know why? I'll remember that. He thought he could help me, she says simply. He tried to calm me when that woman's voice in my head said I was her and not me. She smiles sadly. I wasn't the first. He had helped other girls like me before. Huh, interesting. But I think he knew it couldn't last, she says, her smile fading. He was afraid, but not for himself. He believed, no, knew I was going to die. One time, he said he'd seen me die too many times, then shut himself up. She claps a hand to her mouth and lowers it. Like that. She shrugs. But he wasn't wrong, was he? Even if he was a little crazy to begin with. Um, you seem awfully at peace about all this. Well, I'm not really me, she says. I'm a reflection of what my father saw of me, the only piece of his mind that's left. When he died, his part of the labyrinth, well, I want to say it broke. But it was worse than that. The cracks burst up to the ground and everything started crumbling. I could feel parts of him slipping away, snapping off. She shudders. I'm glad you brought me here. I would have fallen apart eventually, and then there would be nothing of him left, nothing of either of us. Um, what does that puzzle box mean to you? My father gave it to me, she says, beaming down at the ghostly version of the box in her hands. He said it was a very old puzzle, and that solving it would help me. She chuckles. <laughs> Never did, but fumbling with it made me feel better. I always had the feeling the pictures on it might mean something, but that was as far as I got. Um, do you know anything else about Orciolo? I should, shouldn't I? She says, chuckling. I was part of his mind, after all. She passes a hand over her forehead absently, leaving her ghostly eyebrows completely disheveled. But no, if I focus, I can see the other the other women he took care of. The ones that look like me, I mean. But it's like looking through dirty glass. I, I, think, I think that means he didn't want to think about them, or couldn't. She shrugs, looking away. I don't know why he spent all that time caring for us. I guess I'll never know for sure. But, all right, one time I asked him what his tattoo meant. Atonement, he said, but not, you know, dramatically. He said it like he was saying his name, like she pauses, rubbing her forehead again. Like it was everything he was. Like if he couldn't atone for, you know, whatever it was, there was no reason to exist anymore. She sighs, but I don't know why he started, and I'll never get a chance to ask him. Grinning again, she rolls her eyes. And that's it. That's all I know about the man who raised me for years. Kids, huh? Uh, a creature named the Sorrow killed Orciolo. Do you have any idea how it found him? No, she says, staring at the air, thinking. 
He didn't abuse his power like some of you do. Didn't pull against the tides or use them as weapons. He never wanted to be noticed, to be found. She breathes in, breathes out. Didn't matter, did it? What are you again? A reflection from Orciello's mind, the only one that slept. Farewell. I'll be here, you know, in your head. And she is. You abruptly feel her presence inside your mind as she's always been there. A new weight behind your temples. Uh, something, something has happened on an instinctual level. You've established a bond with this reflection. Some of her gifts are yours, and you feel stronger for it. However, this link fully occupies a corner of your mind. You may be able to forge connections with more than one reflection in the labyrinth, but not many. So I got a new ability, Serious Peace. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Uh, Serious Peace. Oh, I, uh, is it a, oh, this is, I guess, static, it's just, I got one might, one speed, one pool, nice, or not one, huh. one might, one speed, one intellect, not one pool, Fine. okay, let's go talk to old lady Haggard over here. Because, you know, we've, we found, well, Saria was one of the people that she was trying to turn into, or trying to turn into her, and that little girl fought her off. So All let's right. see if we can get some more insight here. Oh, what's this? Fine. We might be making more progress tonight than we thought after all. Then I figured I would. Avina, that's the little girl that fought her off. Oh, what's this? What in the world? The sage, the ghostly woman, the sage, she says, watching the scene in front of you. I remember the siege. When the Tabat came to des destroy Sagas Cliffs. You remember it? I think it happened a long time ago. Did it? I'm only a broken memory, apparently. What do I know of time? A wry smile plays on her lips. It's the ghostly woman talking to me. After a long, quiet moment, she nods, as though coming to a decision. I was there. I remember the screams and the terror. The Tabat came, many of them mounted on their dragoliths, each of them with a stranger, more terrifying weapon than the one before. Sagas should have fallen, like Shuna and Ika and a hundred villages before us, but it didn't. We fought them off. She shakes her head, but what does that have to do with the other women? I don't know. There's more to this story. I need your help to find it. Who is this? Can I do anything? What is what's going on here? Yeah, he's ignoring me. He looks at me for a second and ignores. So that's what the Tabat look like. There's a statue of somebody helped them fight off the Tabat. I think it's in Okay, so they're not going to talk to me. I need to go yes. over here. Now. Hold on. Hold on, ghostly woman. What's up? Look, you follow her finger to a glowing form where before there was nothing. It's a Mimbra. You found one of them already. The woman created by the engine. The women created by the engine. Let's go. I did. I don't know. I'm a little confused by this quest. Saria. Yep. Okay. So Saria and that little girl. All right. ghostly woman. Her eyes grow wide at the scene in front of you. That's me! I remember now. The siege ended. The Tabat were driven back, and I was among the survivors, but she places a hand on the surface of the chamber. I didn't exactly survive. One of the Tabat's weapons made me sick somehow in my mind. My father was an explorer and a tinkerer. He knew something about the Numenera. He put me in there to protect me. 
but the Aeon priests and Chirurgians couldn't help me. No one could. My father kept me in stasis until a cure could be found. She gazes into the distance as though trying to remember something. Are the women the result of some attempted cure? I, I don't know. Please, we're so close. Keep looking so we can find the answer. Wow. She looks so real. Her chest moves up and down with each breath. It's strange to see the ghostly woman both inside this chamber and out of it. All right. The machine makes no sounds or motion at all like the other machines here. They seem to be just a facade. Okay. Go. So I need to find at least one more woman. Have you found any more of the women? We have to help them. Do you have any more impressions of where I might find these women? I know that one of them is a leader. She has sacrificed much of her life and so gained life in return. Okay. Um, I'm so ready. I need to find a leader. Okay. So that was... I, I actually made a lot more progress on this ghostly Fine. woman quest than I was expecting to. It was nice that that little girl helped with two quests. I'm going. The, the void... The void reflection lady that I had to get the cube for and then also the old lady. I don't know. I'm I gotta ready. find some more. I gotta find one more lady who's a leader. So that's probably gonna be yes. a government square. But I don't know for sure. Bye bye, Syria. Alright, I'm out of here. I'm not gonna fight this On other it. thing yet. Fine. Okay, so that's going to be it for this uh, video. Uh, next video, um, I need to try to find a woman who is a leader. I'm going to guess that'll be up around Government Square. It said a leader who has sacrificed much of her life and, and, and gained life in return. And that's for the ghostly woman quest. The women who are kind of turning in to the ghostly woman. We found two already. Saria the um the corpse lady um or the the corpse i found in the buried house and then also uh the little girl in cliff's edge you know actually I, i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go turn in the quest with um the um oh which uh the the sculptor i think i've got I'll enough to, to to turn that quest in now to hide. honestly I was hoping to hide with you. I'm going to go turn in the sculptor quest and then we'll um next video we'll go to the reef of the fallen worlds and investigate that structure and then we also need to find that lady the the lady who's a leader and it looks like the last person we need to find Am I in government square right now? Sigan. It's a dude, isn't it? Oh, let's go take a look. Yeah, I'm gonna go square. Is Sigan a lady? Maybe I can find her. I can't tell if that's a dude or not. Yep. The uniform woman's head. City business or something else. Maybe this is the lady. Uh, yep, here we go. You look a lot like someone I met in the fifth eye. She laughs aloud. In that moment, her voice is clear and rich. Like that of a much younger woman or even a teenage girl. Was she a scarred peltast, wedded to her blade, fresh from the endless battle? Uh, I would say actually she was young, with a chorus of whispering voices all around her. Her face goes pale. Then I know who she was. She was the woman who haunted me when I was a girl. The woman I was supposed to become. I'll remember that. For as long as I can remember, I felt as though this other woman was taking shape inside me. When I was a girl, I'd gaze at myself in the looking glass, and every day I seemed less like me and more like her. I don't remember when I abandoned my family, but I couldn't have been more than 10 or 12. They seemed like strangers to me. I can't even remember who they were. I started hearing stories about other girls like me. Older girls, younger girls. I sought them out. Learned everything I could. 
All the ones I met went mad, and they never survived past their 20th year. It wasn't always the same death. Sometimes it was sickness, or an accident, or the end of their own lives, but somehow they always died. It was fate, and it was mine too. But you survived. I cheated. She's silent for a moment. When I was old enough to become a citizen, to sacrifice a year to create a levy, I went straight to the Order of Truth and told them I wanted to donate as many years as I could. I didn't think it would work, she confides. But what choice did I have? When they started taking the first few years, and I aged closer to 20, each time I thought I would die. And the levy that was born for my 20th year? It was a monster. They tried to make me stop, but I refused. I made them go on. I burned through my 20s and beyond, and with every year I lost, I felt that other woman inside me weakening, pleading, dying. I laughed as they burned the years away. When I walked into the Order of Truth, I was a teenage girl. When I walked out a few hours later, I was a middle-aged woman. But I was free. You said the levy that was born from your, or the levy that was born from your 20th year was a monster? It was death. Not death the way it's personified in stories, but death like it really is. A bloated thing with festering sores, vomiting blood and pus and excrement from every orifice. Even the Aeon priests were terrified. They burned it to a pile of ash. How long has this been happening, women in the city? Centuries, I think. The earliest reference I could find was around the time of Chila. But it probably goes back even further. There was an Aeon priest uh, about 80 years ago. He thought he'd make a name for himself by discovering the cause. He found that it only affects women in Sagas, never in the outlying villages. He thought it might be caused by some kind of Numenera underneath the city, but he was never able to prove anything. Oh, I'm going to ask a very rude question. So how old are you really? 22. <laughs> That's why I was too young to remember you when you were here last. I was a 12-year-old girl, a runaway, half mad and living in the streets. Interesting. All right, farewell. Okay, so... Trust now, and honesty are our bonds. I have enough information to go back to the ghostly woman. Let's go to Circus Minor. On it. Okay. So I'm going to go turn in the sculptor quest, and then we really will be done. Well, the first part of this... All right. Session. I really felt like I wouldn't get much done, but now I feel like we're making some good progress. Some of these side quests I wasn't even going to mess with. Like the ghostly woman, I wasn't even sure I was going to mess with it, but it's kind of unfolding itself. Learning All right, to get uh, let's talk or to the sculptor. The Zeofi's red-rimmed eyes narrow as you approach. You... You've learned something of my subject. Why did he go willingly into his murderer's arms? Tell me. Leave nothing out. Um, his daughter was killed when their home collapsed. Grief drove him to seek his own death. I'll remember that. Yeah, I got 40 XP. Grief! Seofi shouts, lunging at his nearest sculpture. He was ruled by sorrow, and the creature killed him. Did he call to her? Was it anger? No? Resignation? Madness! Carving, scraping, shouting, and muttering, Zeofi has clearly forgotten you're here, except for one detail. His hand gropes clumsily in his pocket, retrieves a pouch, and thrusts it at you. Uh, good luck and farewell. Alright, so I got a spirit shroud. What the heck is that? Oh, nice. It's, it's a cloak. It's an artifact. When damaged by energy, chemical, mental, or trans-dimensional damage, confers um, spirit shroud with plus 15... Plus 15% evasion, active one round. It's only usable by me. Garment has no defined edges, like a wrapping cover, but someone fitted into a dozen crude metal hooking fasteners. Fitted onto it, a dozen crude metal hooking fasteners. When properly draped over one's outer clothing, the fasteners provide a weather-tight overlap. Ethereal and mist-like, the shroud's almost non-color nonetheless reflects a vibrant white, not unlike the snow and ice it protects against. Huh. So it gives energy resistance. And if you get damaged by energy, chemical, mental, or transdimensional, it, you get plus 15% evasion. 
It may well have been plundered from a grave, but the material seems new, spotless, and utterly devoid of wrinkles. Why anyone would want to protect the dead from the cold is a valid question. You will find better use among the living. Interesting. Okay, yeah, I definitely want to equip that. Now I have a spirit shroud. Very cool. Alright. So, um, this is the way to the Reef of the Fallen Worlds. So, let's go over here. Of course. And when we come back, we're going to go, the next video, we're going to go to the Reef of Fallen Worlds and investigate the structure that we're supposed to investigate. What's it called? The, um, da -da -da -da, the Anechoic Lazaret. Um, yeah. And then also, we've got one more lady, ghost lady, that we can talk, we can go into the labyrinth and talk to the ghost woman. We have one more woman uh, that we can talk to or that we've talked to to tell her about that we can unlock more of the story of the ghostly woman. So thanks so much for watching this uh, Let's Play s series of Torment Tides of Numenera. Please leave a comment and a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. And consider subscribing to the channel. I do a lot of cool geeky stuff, not just Let's Plays, but a lot of geeky content, including Geek Talk Radio Show and, uh, um, you know, a lot of D&D &D stuff, a lot of RPG stuff. Just, just uh, if it's geeky, it goes. So... Anyway, we will catch you next time on Shane Place. Thanks for watching.